Hi, I'm Rachel, and today I'm going to be showing you my minimalist art travel kit. I'm about to take a trip to Tokyo, Japan. My husband and I are taking our son to college there, and, and I wanted to bring the absolute smallest possible travel art kit with me. When I travel, I don't always get to use my art supplies. I, I do bring a travel kit with me, but I find that the tension between I want to see something and I want to see all there is versus sitting down to actually draw and sketch when you're with a bunch of people, such as our family, you can't always get to the drawing part. So I like to bring supplies with me just in case there's extra time when I'm back at the hotel and I can look through my pictures from the day and then sketch from that and then also journal what I did that day. But this time I'm not gonna bring a ton of art supplies. I also know that Japan has a lot of stationary products and pens and pencils and artist supplies that I'm hoping to be able to visit some of those stores and bring back a few of their supplies. So I want to show you the travel kit that I'm putting together for traveling to Japan. Like I said, it is a complete minimalist kit. So I have here on the table what I'm gonna bring. If you're not familiar with traveler's notebooks, they originate in Japan. And in Tokyo, there are several flagship stores which I hope to visit at least one. I know there's one in the airport. The cover is made of leather and the system is set up such as you have many interchangeable notebooks that you can slide into an elastic band that's in the center. There's also a bookmark that you can use. And the papers have different weights and different functions. For example, there is a dot grid, there is a graph paper grid. I have here a cream paper, which is my favorite. There's also a sketch paper notebook, which is for wet media, such as watercolor. You can also slide in a zipper pouch that you can tuck away your souvenir tickets or stickers or washi tape that you're bringing with you. So I'm setting this journal up with a cream um, paper for writing and journaling in as well as sketching and the sketch paper pad. I was going to add this dot grid, but I decided not to because I, like I said, I want this to be minimalist and I don't want any extra thickness or weight in my suitcase. So I think this is good to go right here. And I want to show you the larger size. I also have a large traveler size notebook and I have been keeping my travel journals in here, but I don't want to bring something this big with me. Let me show you just in case you've never seen these before. They are wonderful. This is an example for the larger notebook of the insert that has the zipper pouch where you can fit your stickers and everything else. There's a lined paper journal. There is a six month calendar that you can set up. It's, it's not labeled, so you label it for whenever you're starting thing. This is it unwrapped. There's also the two month diary journal. There is a dot grid for the larger journal as well. It comes in, all the journals come in a cloth pouch, which is nice to keep it from scratching. You can also buy craft paper inserts, as well as I believe if you're there locally at the shops, you can buy it in a turquoise color and a salmon color. There's also the cream paper, which is my favorite. And a this is the white line paper. These notebooks are very versatile and I think it's really fun to set up it exactly how you like to use it. So getting back to, put these off the table. So getting back to my travel art kit, I have my notebook selected, and the next thing I need is something to write with. I need to draw, I like to draw in pencil first, and so I have a pencil and a Pentel eraser. My mechanical pencil is something that I've used for years. This is a 0.7 millimeter, and I like the fine line Pigma Micron pens. This one's a 05, which is my favorite thickness. And I've selected one Copic marker color. I've selected this bright yellow because number one, I love bright yellow. Number two, it reminds me of summer. And number three, I'm also packing my bright yellow backpack to bring. The next thing I need is color. I'm very tempted to bring a whole set of colored pencils, but I'm refraining myself. Last trip I took, I brought a zipper pouch with a lot of colored pencils, but I brought some watercolor pencils that I hadn't used very much and they were very hard and the watercolor was very pale and not vivid and I wasn't very excited about the results and so I decided that I didn't want to keep those watercolor pencils and I got rid of them. Instead, I'm going to bring my trusty watercolor palette that I've put together. I brought this on many trips and it works so well. 
I have created, I have created a color swatch so that I know what color is which, and it has about 29 colors, I believe, in it. And it has my favorite color, so I know that whatever I need is gonna be there. I use the lid as my mixing palette, and I have a little rubber band to secure the entire thing so the lid doesn't come off. Then I need a brush. I have only one travel size brush. This is a Da Vinci size five, and I find that it works really well. I know a lot of people like to travel with the, where is it? I know a lot of people like to travel with these watercolor brushes that you put, you fill the reservoir with water, but since I'll be traveling on a plane, I don't like to bring these because number one, you have to remember to put them in the quart Ziploc bag when you go through security. I don't wanna forget that. And number two, the cabin pressure in the airplane can sometimes cause things to leak like fountain pens and such. I would prefer to write with a fountain pen. I love writing with fountain pens, but those things leak when you bring them in an airplane cabin. So I'm gonna leave this at home which leads me to need a water source. I know that when I travel, I always bring a water bottle with me, and especially now because it's gonna be in the 90s. I have this Faber-Castell water cup. You just push the bottom and it expands out. This works really well if I'm doing urban sketching around home or traveling in the car, by car, and then I carry a lot larger travel kit. But for now, I need something smaller. So I have this cosmetics container, it's plastic, not glass, and it holds a good amount of water. I probably wouldn't need to bring this. I would think that the hotel would have a paper cup, but you never know. I certainly wouldn't wanna use a glass cup and get paint in it because I would need that glass to drink out of, but just in case there's only water bottles, I am going to bring this so that I have a way to have water for my watercolor set. So I'm not gonna carry that. The next thing I need is a blotter, and I've cut a piece off of an old cotton sheet very absorbent, so this will work well. Instead of bringing a paper towel, which gets used up and then you don't have another paper towel, I think fabric is better. And the last thing here is a binder clip. I might find one more to bring in here, but this traveler's notebook, although the pages do lay flat, sometimes it pops up. And so when you use one of these binder clips, you can just um, secure the pages down and it lays flat for you. So I think that's um, about all that I need. Let's see how it packs into this little zipper pouch that I'm bringing. All right, first I'm gonna put at the bottom all of my pins, and then I'm gonna put my notebook, my cloth, my watercolor palette, and over here on the other side is my water tank and my binder clip. And you can see there's plenty of space left in here if I wanted to add more. I'm sure I'll be shopping at the stationery stores in Tokyo and I can add a few more pins to this. But for now, it's lightweight, it's small, it's minimalistic, and I think it's all I will need to carry with me. And now, I want to tell you something that really surprised me. As I was researching to go on this trip to Japan, I was so surprised to find out how many art products that I currently use and love come from Japan. Let's go over to my journaling desk and I'll show you a few. While planning my trip, I found somebody who had posted a photo of all of their art supplies that they had hauled from the stores in Tokyo. And they mentioned a couple of things here. Copic markers come from Japan. Did you know that? I love these markers, they're amazing. Okay, jelly roll pins, Sakura, Sakura jelly roll pins come from Japan. Sarasa pins come from Japan. They write really well. Pasca markers come from Japan. Did you know that? Okay, let's open some of these drawers down here. I don't know if the video is gonna go down there, so I'm going to bring it closer. Okay, Tombow markers come from Japan. Wait, this is Stettler. <laughs> Stettler, sorry, we got the wrong ones. Ah, so these, where are all my, they're all, my markers are kind of mixed together, but Tombow markers come from Japan, as well as Tombow brush pins and Fuda, what are they called, Fuda Saka, Fuda something? Those come from Japan. My, some of my favorite fountain pens are from Pilot, the brand Pilot. These Pilot Metropolitans are made in Japan, as well as my very favorite fountain pen, 
which is over there. These all come from Japan. Sailor ink comes from Japan. I do not have one in this drawer, but that's also a very good ink. Let's go back over here to my desk and I'll show you a few other things. Okay, I've brought out a few more things that come from Japan. This is the Pilot fountain pen that is my absolute favorite that I told you about. It has a flexible nib. This comes from Japan. Seiko watches come from Japan. My two Sony cameras come from Japan. This brush pen that I filled with black ink comes from Japan. Did you know Pintel pens come from Japan? These are my favorite to write with every day, like in my notebooks. Gouache paint, Holbein brand comes from Japan. The, I think the factory is in Osaka, I believe. Um, these over here are Schmincke, but almost everything in this box are Holbein gouache paints. They're phenomenal. They have the acrylic gouache, which is the kind that is not um, water soluble. They'll dry and it's more like an acrylic paint. And then there's regular standard gouache, which is um, that you can re-wet. Holbein, so Holbein gouache paints. My beautiful, um, my beautiful Kuretake watercolors come from Japan. Look at these. They look gorgeous. And this Midori notebook comes from Japan. I haven't opened this one yet. It has beautiful cream paper. One more thing that I didn't mention that's not an art supply is Hello Kitty comes from Japan, as you well know. Did you know that that many art supplies came from Japan? I didn't know that, and the more I look, I'm happily surprised. So I'm looking forward to visiting the shops and finding out are there other brands that I wasn't aware of that are produced and made in Japan. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you like this video. Please subscribe if you want to see more, and have a great day, and go make some art today.